This is the second video to get you ready for the chapter 6 test, which is all about differential equations. So what I did for this video is I tried to look through some of my resources and find a couple more questions that are more in line with the way the AP words questions and looking at uh, w the way they set up problems and also looking at calculator versus non-calculator, multiple choice versus one where you have to show your work. So I only have two problems in this video, but it does give you a little bit of variety. What you're looking at here, this would be a calculator allowed section. Um, it's a very, actually a calculator active problem because you would have to have a calculator to complete this one. And it also is a multiple choice question. So you can see those choices A through E would be the choices that you would be given on an actual AP test in the calculator section. So first, when we re start reading this question, it talks about how the population is growing according to the equation dy dt equals ky. This is one of our indicators or our signal words for exponential growth or decay. We talked in class about how you need to be able to recognize by, based on the wording or the symbols when you use exponential growth and decay. Once you recognize that, you don't have to actually do a lot of calculus on these. You don't have to separate and integrate. You can go straight to your known model for exponential growth and decay especially on a multiple choice setting where you're not trying any work to begin with anyway. So you want to get straight to the equation that's helpful. When you keep reading, it gives you some information. And what you'll notice about this problem is it actually only wants you to find k, which is our first step anyway. So this problem is a little shorter than some of the other ones, because once you find k for this one, you're done. It does tell us that the population doubles eight, every eight years. So I'm going to be really generic. And what I'm going to write is, if I start with a population of c, then that means over that eight-year time period, I'm going to get to 2 times c. And you'll see that those c's will cancel. And then for t, I'm going to put an 8 in. This is very similar to what I talked about in class with half-life. You always get the idea that you have half as much left, so you can have that generic piece and you end up with a half. In this case, you're doubling, so instead of having a growth factor of a half, you have a growth factor of two. So you get this statement. At this point, then, it is just an algebra problem. We need to solve for k, so we're going to take the natural log of both sides. And then our last step is to divide by 8. If this was a non-calculator type problem, you would have your answer left as the natural log of 2 divided by 8. Obviously, it's a calculator type problem, so you're going to go to your calculator, type in the natural log of 2. Make sure you do close that parentheses because you only want to have 2 be part of the natural log, and then you want to divide the whole thing by 8. You get an answer of 0 .08664. Looking at your choices, they rounded. Your correct answer is A. So giving an idea of, as far as signal words, signal as formulas, and then also what the expectations are with a calculator and without a calculator. The second problem I want to look at is more of your traditional separate and integrate type problem. Uh, this is not a multiple choice. This would be more of like a part A or part B on a rubric. Um, part A actually would probably be to graph this differential equation as a slope field. I'm not asking you to do that. Uh, you had to do that a little bit in some of the in-class activities. Instead, I'm asking you to solve. And what you'll notice is I'm also giving you an initial condition, so I want the particular solution to this differential equation. So my first step is to separate it. And when you separate this, I guess I don't want you to overdo it. When you see that negative 2, I'm going to leave it where it is. You could move it with the y. I think it's a lot simpler to just move the y by itself and then keep the negative 2 with the x. You have your choice when it comes to coefficients where you want them to go. I tend to do the least amount of moving. If There's no sense dividing by a number and creating a fraction if it's not necessary. So I've separated it. Now I'm ready to integrate it. So I get the natural log of y equals negative x squared plus c. I don't want to leave my answer in this. Even if you didn't have to find your c value, I still want to do some simplifying by taking e on both sides. So we get y equals, remember the c becomes the coefficient, so c e to the negative x squared. And it comes the coefficient, if you want to see that one more time, because it would be e to the negative x squared times e to the c using exponent rules. This is nothing more than just a constant, which is why we're allowed to write it like this. If you want to use a different letter, it would be perfectly acceptable to write k or something like that. So there is our general solution. For our particular solution, we need to plug in our point. So our point in this form, this is the point 1, 4. So I'm going to put 4 in for y. I'm going to put 1 in for x. So I get negative 1 squared, which is just negative 1. Because it's not the negative that's being squared. You're just squaring the 1 and then making it negative. So it does stay negative. Your c value then, if you divide both sides, this is very similar to one we did in class, by e to the negative 1, you get 4e, because that negative exponent would move up. So there's your c value. A lot of ways to write your answer. You could write your answer as 4e, and then in parentheses, times e to the negative x squared. 
the prep book that I got this one from did not leave it like that. It wanted to show you some different looks to the answers. What they did is they did an exponent rule, which said when your bases are being multiplied, you add your exponent. So this was the answer that was written in the book where I found this one. And my guess is, even though this wasn't a multiple choice question, that is the more appropriate multiple choice that you would be looking for. So short answer environment, if you leave it as e times e to the negative x squared, simplifying does not change your answer. You would get full credit. But in a multiple choice setting, you want to look for the answers that have been simplified, because they usually do use either exponent rules or logarithm rules. So hopefully this video, combined with the first video that was a little bit longer, combined with the extra problems that I gave you to review, Chapter 6 should be enough to really make sure you're comfortable no matter how the question's worded and no matter what they're asking you to do.